All right, so in this video, we're still in chapter seven, and now we're going to concentrate on the parts of a long bone. Uh, again, the long bone is what we generally look at in this uh, chapter as, a, as the ideal or standard bone. And so let's look at some parts. This as it lists, you know, we're going to look at some pictures and go over this in a second, but um, <clears throat> this just gives a list of the long bones. Again, we said as a, a definition of a long bone, it has a hardened middle shaft with expanded ends. Uh, so in this, we learn that the hardened middle shaft is called whoop, the diaphysis. I almost messed that up. The hardened middle shaft is called the diaphysis, and the expanded ends are called epiphyses. So if I draw a little milk bone right here, um, this, the diaphysis, is this hardened middle shaft. The epiphyses are either end to this. Um, and so uh, that's the basic idea. Now, there is a little area between the two called the metaphys uh, that we will look at, um, but we're going to call it something else as we get farther along. We're going to see that this is where the quote-unquote growth, growth plate, the, the epiphyseal plate is uh, but again, we'll look at this when we look at how bones are formed, but not too worried about the metaphys right now. The epiphysis and the diaphysis are the two areas I definitely want you to know. Now, the epiphyses are going to be covered with what is called articular cartilage. Articular simply means joint-related. And so the, the scientific name for a joint is an articulation. So these little areas here are going to have cartilage on it called articular cartilage that's going to be used to help uh, these joints move a little smoothly. Again, if you've ever eaten a, a chicken drumstick and you get that nasty white little piece of cartilage on it, that is articular cartilage. Now, articular cartilage is a type of hyaline cartilage. Remember, hyaline cartilage is the most common type of cartilage in the body. And so articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage. Um, now, the whole bone itself is going to have an outer covering called the periosteum. The periosteum is going to surround all bones, and um, it is a dense connective tissue. Uh, it's a pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing um, tissue that's, uh, that's around these. Now, each bone is going to have a combination of two types of bone, uh, compact and spongy. I'm not worried about you knowing uh, the scientific name for them. I just want you to know compact and spongy. Every bone's going to have a little bit of, of both of these, uh, more in different areas. For instance, in the average long bone, compact, which is where it's very densely packed together, which makes sense, is mainly going to be in the diaphysis. Now, the diaphysis is going to have a thin layer of spongy bone on the inside of it, but as this uh, diaphysis gets closer to the epiphyses, the compact bone is going to thin out and more spongy bone is going to fill in. So the epiphyses is going to be made up more of spongy bone. Spongy bone is very spongy like. You'll see a picture of this in just a minute. Now in spongy bone, we're going to see that the, the sponge itself, the, the webbing of the bone is called trabiculae, which literally means webs. Um, so these little bungee plate or these bony plates that are sponge like sponge looking are called trabiculae. Now inside the diaphysis there's going to be a hollow cavity called the medullary cavity. We're going to see that this is going to contain yellow bone marrow, all right, which is kind of a storage closet for uh, fats and different minerals. Uh, but the medullary cavity is going to hold this yellow bone marrow. Again, it's going to be found, if I kind of draw, it's going to be found in here. We're going to see these pictures in just a minute to do a much better job. Now, the medullary cavity is what is going to be lined by spongy bone. Again, the, just to kind of show you that it's this combination of both of them. Now, the medullary cavity is also going to have a connective tissue called endosteum that's going to line it. So I'm going to have uh, this, if I draw a little circle, a cut across, all right? So uh, if you've ever seen a little ham steak, and we'll, again, we'll see a little picture here in a minute. So this little area here that I just kind of circled is the medullary cavity, yellow bone marrows in there. 
this little membrane that's going to surround it, and again, this is all going to be spongy bone that's going to be surrounding it, but that membrane that's going to be covering is the endosteum, and then the outside of the, the bone itself is going to be covered with periosteum. Now, spongy bone um, is going to be uh, what is going to have the red bone marrow. So in these little epiphyses, this is where you're going to find that red bone marrow, which is the area that holds the hemopoietic stem cell, the, the scientific way of saying the grandparent cell for every type of blood cell in our body. Every white blood cell, our red blood cells, and the platelets all have a common ancestor called the hemopoietic stem cell, and that hangs out in red bone marrow. So if you look at this picture, again, it kind of points to the different things. We've got, uh, this is the, um, the epiphysis on one end, the epiphysis down here on the other. You see the epiphysis is covered with articular cartilage on the outside, and on the inside it is filled mainly with spongy bone. I do have a small little layer of compact bone because we need that. But in this spongy bone that's in the epiphysis is where we're going to find this red bone marrow. Now, the metaphys, as we say here, is just that little dividing line between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. The diaphysis itself has the medullary cavity, this little hollow opening in here that is containing the red bone marrow and then lined with the uh, endosteum. Now, all along here, and again, I can't really zoom it in, but this is spongy bone that's lining that. But the real star of the show of the diaphysis is this thick ring of compact bone. And again, the whole bone itself is covered um, with this periosteum around it. Now, inside the bone, we have mature bone cells called osteocytes. Now, remember, uh, in a previous chapter, we talked about some of these prefixes and suffixes. The suffix site means mature, mature cell. Uh, so, a, um, you know, a chondrocyte, uh, the prefix, like in this, osteo, osteo means bone, chondro means cartilage. So, a chondrocyte is a cartilage cell, an osteocyte is a bone cell. And it denotes that it is a mature bone cell. And we're going to see something uh, with this when we look at some other uh, cells that build bone, um, how the difference between a mature and an immature bone cell works. And there's a different name. But an osteocyte is a mature bone cell. And they're going to live in these little hollow cavities. And I'll just kind of draw it here. And so inside this cavity, I'm going to have this nice little happy... Um, that's supposed to be a smile, uh, osteocyte. The hollowed out cavity is called a lacuna. You can kind of remember it's like a cocoon, all right? A lacuna, uh, which literally means a crib or house, as the little area where the osteocytes live. And this little area is going to have tiny passages that allow for fluid to come and go to bring in the good and get rid of the bad. And those little passages are called caniculi. Again, that's a Greek way of saying small canal. Now, the bone itself is going to be made up of a lot of extracellular matrix. Now, this is a, a fancy way of, gay of saying the ground substance, the things that make up the 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 major parts of connective tissue. Remember, connective tissue, you've got cells interdispersed within a lot of extracellular matrix. And the extracellular matrix is going to mainly be collagen and inorganic salts. And just remember, when we talk about inorganic salts, we're talking about calcium phosphate and the main, and I'm because I'm having a hard time with that. I don't want to get too crazy with that. But calcium phosphate, but more importantly than calcium phosphate, I want you to remember that it is calcium. Calcium is going to be the key. Uh, we're going to look at these two things later on. We look at how vitamins affect bone health. Collagen gives bone its resilience, which means it's it makes it harder to break. For instance, resilience, resilience uh, another way to say it is something called tensile strength. And here's the best example I can come up with understanding resilience or tensile strength. If I had a tree 
and I cut off a branch, and it doesn't have to be a thick branch, but let's just say it's like an inch, inch in diameter. If I cut off that branch and try to break it after I just cut it off the tree, it would be very hard to break it because it still has all the sap and stuff in it. But if I found a, an inch diameter branch that had fallen off four months ago and it was just on the ground, I'd be able to break it pretty easily because it has no tensile strength. It has no resilience. Collagen gives bone its resilience. And while you might not realize this, bone can bend a good bit before it breaks. And so um, this is what collagen does. Now, inorganic salts, and again, remember whenever I say inorganic salts, I'm talking about calcium. Calcium gives bone its rigidity. It makes the bone hard, which is saying that like an eggshell can be hard but fragile. So these two things, collagen and calcium, work together to give bones its ability to bend without breaking and to remain hard. And so um, we're going to look at how these play, the, the two things play into each other as, and vitamin deficiencies. And uh, it becomes really important to understand why collagen, uh, which needs vitamin C to be made, gives bones its resilience, while calcium, which needs vitamin D to be absorbed, gives bone its rigidity. And again, we'll d dig into that a little bit later on. So compact bone and spongy bone, so all these, these inner parts of the, the bone itself are made up of both of these. So compact bone is very densely packed, but it is organized. It is organized into these round or it's cylindrical units called osteons. They extend the length of the diaphysis. They run up and down like this, all right? So if I'm drawing them back and forth, that's, that's these little osteons, these groups. Now, the osteons themselves are made up of layers. They're like ogres. They're made up of layers, right? And these layers are called lamella. Again, that's a fancy way of saying layer. It's a scientific way of saying layer. So osteons are these tubes that are made up of layer upon layer of things called lamella. Now, Inside each osteon, there's going to be a central canal. Um, central canal is, is one way to call it. I would encourage you to remember it as the osteonic canal, but um, since a lot of people are going to be taking this online and the, the quizzes that you're going to take are going to be from the publisher, they use the term central canal. But I would remember it's the canal in the center of the osteon. Uh, don't get confused with the medullary cavity, which is in the center of the bone itself. The central canal is the middle part, the center part of each osteon. And a, again, a more scientific way and a more acceptable way is generally called the osteonic canal. But that's, I just want to give you a heads up with that. Um, compact bone, because of these osteons, are very strong and solid. These are going to be Use this is going to be really big in areas of weight bearing, and they're going to resist compression. So uh, the bones of your forearm, you can kind of you can put a lot of pressure on them, and um, they are going to help. They're going to be very sturdy. Spongy bone, on the other hand, are going to have these branching plates that we looked at earlier called trabeculae, which just simply means web-like. Uh, they they are a lot more flexible, and this is going to help reduce the weight. Um, of the bone. And so, uh, for instance, birds, their bones have very little compact bone. They have basically shells of compact bone, and it is mainly spongy bone because it's trying to limit the weight of it. But um, again, for us, you know, we've got a lot of compact bone and spongy bone. In these pictures, you kind of see this again is that little like I say, the ham steak where you look at this, a cross section of the diaphysis. You see the, the medullary cavity in here. You can easily see the spongy bone that's lying in the medullary cavity and this ring of compact bone that gives it a lot of uh, sturdiness. Now, I hate, I should have twisted this around a little bit to show you. This is the femur. And actually, uh, if I'm looking at it, this is... Um, top and this is bottom. This would be the way of weight bearing here. And if you're looking at it, you can see that the spongy bone lines up, the trabeculae kind of line up in the areas of weight bearing. And we're going to see this when we talk about bone health. 
and how um, you really need physical stress on your bones in order to keep them healthy and your bone will line up along the lines of weight bearing or stress. And then this is just showing a little flat bone. A flat bone is like a, a bone sandwich, I like to call it, because it's got a little plate of compact bone on either side and spongy bone in the middle. Finally, we look at um, the compact bone itself. Now, we've looked at this in lab a little bit. Uh, this is showing all three parts of it. This is the bone itself, and this is a little wedge we've taken out of it and blown it up for this, and then we've blown it up to look at the caniculi. I'm gonna concentrate on this picture here and use it as a larger picture in just a second, but just kind of showing again, you know, so the diaphysis, we've got the diaphysis and the epiphysis. We're looking at, you know, the periosteum. You can see the little part on the outside. We've got a ring of compact bone. We've got a little bit of spongy bone. And inside here, we have the medullary cavity with the yellow bone marrow. You can see the articular cartilage here, which is again, hyaline cartilage. Um, in this picture, I don't really care for this picture, but this is basically a lacuna with the osteocyte in the middle of it. Uh, this little layer from here to here, these are all uh, little lamella. This is trying to show these are the lamella from one part to another. And these little canals between the lamella are caniculi, but I'm going to explain that a little bit more in this next picture. So if I enlarge it a little bit so that we can see this, um, what we're looking at again, you know, not going over everything again, but you got the periosteum out over here is the medullary cavity. You've got the spongy bone here. So this little part here is the compact bone. And in the compact bone, we have these repeating structures called osteon. And remember, you can kind of see all these little rings in, inside the osteon. Each one of those rings is a wall called a lamella. So the lamella are these little walls, and in between the lamella are where you find the osteocytes. So inside here, if I look at this, it looks like there's a whole bunch of little ants crawling around, right? Those little things that you can see, these are the osteocytes. The legs of them are the caniculi. So in between the lamella are where the osteocytes are going to basically live. And so they're in between there, snug in between there, and I need to get fluid to them. I need to get good yummy oxygen because they are alive and I need to get rid of carbon dioxide and different waste products. So uh, we need oxygen and glucose to come in. We need carbon dioxide to leave. And so the way this works is I will have blood vessels here in the medullary cavity and they will start working their way out. This little hole is called the perforating canal. And as the perforating canal works its way, and I'll try to use black, a black marker, uh, maybe, or blue, maybe blue's better, uh, I don't know, maybe yellow. But this perforating canal, as it comes out, it's going to meet up with the um, central canals or the osteonic canals and continue to spread out and continue to work its way across and meet up with other central or osteonic canals and, and spread out. Now this makes a big capillary bed. And what's gonna happen is, and I'll switch it to maybe light blue, and the blood, the plasma is gonna seep out. And as it starts moving through, it's gonna move through these lamella through little pores. Now, I use this in class and I try to explain it. And, and since we're just talking here and you don't, you can't see what I'm doing. Um, this room, I'm in the, the uh, 210 lab, and our lab room is made up of cinder blocks. I mean, they're painted and it looks nice or whatever, but it's basically masonry break, cinder blocks. Most people who live up north uh, have houses that have basements. Not everybody in the south has basements, and that's fine. If you've ever been in a house with a basement, in general, you'll, you'll kind of have the idea that it's cinder blocks and it's painted and sealed. Now cinder blocks are very strong and they are the perfect analogy of these lamella because while they're very strong, they're really porous. If you do not waterproof them, 
water moves through those masonry blocks like they're not even there. Uh, it takes very little time to get from one side to the other if it is not sealed. And that's exactly how the lamella are. They're very strong, but very porous. And what happens is the areas where the osteocytes are are going to be like magnets sucking that plasma to them. And so the pores around them are going to start being exaggerated because they're being used and they make very visible larger pores. That is why these little osteocytes look like ants because it looks like they have little legs. Those are the caniculi. They're the larger pores that are allowing for plasma to come and go. And I hope that makes sense. Again, this should be kind of a review for the lab. Um, hopefully you've gone, we've got to the lab at this point, but if not, it's the same material that we're going to look at when we get into the lab and look at compact bone. I hope that helps and we will continue our journey with the next video.